Hey everyone, welcome back to Electrical Infinity. In today's video, we will dive into part 2 of our car park lighting design series. But before we get started, if you still need to watch part 1, make sure to go check it out to get a better understanding of the performance and requirements. So grab a notebook and pen, sit back and let's get started. I'm using Dynax Evo for my design. First I will create a project using order and building planning options here. Then click on construction and load the AutoCAD drawing of the car park using the load plan options here. After uploading the plan, set your plans origin by clicking the bottom left of the drawing. Also set the scale of the drawing by matching it with the dimensions on your drawing. Here we have a 2.5 meter wide car park. So I will click on these two endpoints and say it is 2.6 meter wide. Thus the origin and the scale are set. After this, click on construction and then site and draw a rectangular floor element at the site where we need to do the calculations. I will put it further down as we also have to check the spill light on the road near the car park exit. Click on 3D view to view floor elements in 3D. This car park has different areas such as circulation roadway, parking aisle, four disabled car park areas. You can see here we got one here, second here, third here and the fourth one here at the bottom and a lot of pedestrian crossways as well. Each region has additional lighting requirement as well as we discussed in part one. Now we have to draw calculation object for all these areas. To do so, click on calculation objects, then click on draw rectangular calculation object and draw rectangular calculation object for the overall car park as I'm doing here. After this, rename it to car park all areas in this property section here. In calculation parameters, get one horizontal illuminance. As you can see here, click on that. And we need to get two vertical illuminance. So I'm adding one more by clicking on this plus option. One horizontal luminance with arrow facing downwards to the ground and one vertical illuminance with arrow facing left, which is 180 degree at 1.5 meter chest height. And the second is with the arrow facing to the right, which is zero degree at 1.5 meter chest height as well. I will discuss settings for measuring grid and value charge settings later. Now draw a rectangular calculation object for the disabled car park and rename it to disabled parking one. We need horizontal luminance for the disabled car park and we don't need any vertical luminance for this. Thus, uh, do the same for the rest of the disabled car park regions as I did. Lastly, I will draw a rectangular calculation object for a pedestrian crossway as well for horizontal luminance. And I will do the same for all the pedestrian crossways on this project. Thus, we have finished drawing the calculation object for all the areas. The next thing we have to do is to select the light fitting. This light fitting has different optics such as narrow wide and extra wide. I will choose the extra wide one, which is that one. And also I will choose the one with 23L, which is a 157 watt light with 21,500 lumens, 4000 K as a color temperature with CRI 70. It is a 157 watt fitting and we will set the maintenance factor in Dialux Evo to 0.8. This is the photometry of the light fitting we have selected. When mounted at 10 meter height, it gives us minimum of 15 lumens for up to 20 meters at the front and up to 15 meters on the each side. There are three types of pole height for mounting light fitting category. Each type has pros and cons. The first one is low height pole with pole height from 4 to 6 meters. And basically uh, light fittings with less wattage is used in this one. The second one is medium height pole and it is uh, varies from 8 to 10 meter 
and um, light fitting is pretty much a medium to high voltage light fitting. Whereas the third one is a tall height pole of around 12 to 20 meters and a high voltage light fittings is usually used on this type of poles. The low height type is usually installed in small car parks. More poles are required in big car parks with this method to achieve uniformity which increases the cost of the project. Meanwhile, medium sized pole can be used in medium and enormous sized car parks where a few poles are required. Installation and transportation of poles are simple and cost effective in this method. Whereas in the high height poles, these are used in uh, very big car parks and stadiums where very few poles around four are required. Out of these three types, I will use the medium height poles of eight meters as a car park is big. Also, we will consider this car park as a PC1 category with high crime and it is in busy area as well. Now click on the light tab on the top, import the IES file from the file explorer. As you can see, I'm going to import the light fitting IES file. Click on that, select the extra wide fitting, which is 23L. That's correct. And also double check the light source dimensions and then click on finish. The light fittings are ready to be placed on the drawings. Firstly, I will provide a dedicated light fitting for each disabled car park because there is a special lighting requirement for this. Place the light fitting here. You can use this option to see the curves of your light fitting. Rotate your light fitting, uh, check the height and the angle as well. You can also check uh, and change the parameters in the 3D view as well. So I'm going to change the height to 8 meters and uh, the angle to minus 10 degree as you can see. Copy the light fitting and paste the same to other disabled car park areas. Make sure you double check the rotation, tilt and height as well. Now let's run the calculations to see the result. I should have added uh, the value chart to the calculation object. But to do so, uh, click the calculation object on the working space and click on this value chart option. Uh, I'm going to set the front size in value chart setting to 0 0.5 meters and the settings for the measuring grid as a distance of 5 meters. Add value charts to disable car park calculation objects as well. And then I'm going to rerun the calculation to check the lux values. You can see that for disabled car park 1, the minimum value is greater than 25, which is greater than 14. As you can see for the disabled car park, the minimum horizontal luminance must be greater than or equal to 14 and greater than or equal to average horizontal luminance for overall car park. The disabled parking 2, 3 and 4 is also greater than or equal to 14. So let's start adding the light for rest of the car park as well. I will be adding three lights on the extreme left side here. Set the height to 8 meters and angle to minus 10 degree. And you can recheck these parameters in the 3D view as well to make sure the inclination is correct, which is minus 10. So it looks it is correct from this setup. Thus, uh, moving forward, copy the light and paste it at equal distances for the rest of the two suitable spots, one on the top and one on the bottom as well. You can see here we, got, we have got three lights on the left side. The distance between them is maximum of 32 meters. Copy all these three light fittings on the left side and paste them to the right side. Rechecking the height, rotation and tilt. Once this is done, I'm going to run the calculations and recheck the lux level again. Now you can see the lux levels near the circulation roadway is low and we need lights here. So I'm going to place four poles around the center area. Make sure the maximum distance between the pole is 50 meters. Each pole will have two light fittings facing against each other. Just copy the light fittings we have already got in this project, one from the left side and one from the right side and paste them so that they face against each other from a single pole. Thus we have two light fittings on one pole as you can see here. After this copy this set of two light fittings and paste it to the second 
next parking row on the north and do the same on the right side circulation roadway car park area as well so we have got four poles at the center area with two lights on each pole let's rerun the calculations and see the results checking the lux levels here for the overall car park the horizontal average is 14 which is fine but the minimum point horizontal lux is below 3 which is at this point so let's move these two poles from the center area to the left side here and see if we can get the horizontal point lux to the greater than 3 so you can see here after doing this and rerunning the calculation the minimum point is 3.4 here as discussed in part 1 about illuminance uniformity this value should not be greater than 8 we can calculate this by dividing the maximum point by average dividing 75 with 23 gives us a value of 3.2 which is compliant for point vertical illuminance the minimum value required is 3 let's check it here you can see that uh, here both of our vertical calculation surface point vertical value is greater than 3 so we are complying with the standard as i have mentioned earlier in this video that for the disabled car park the point horizontal luminance should be greater than or equal to 14 and greater than the average of the overall car park here by adding some more lights at the center of the car park and on the left and right side we messed up with the average of the disabled car park so i'm just moving the lights at the center so that our average for this disabled car park area is greater than the overall car park average so moving it at the center and rerunning the calculation you can see our average minimum value is greater than the average of the overall car park so doing same for the car parks at the bottom as well because the minimum point lux here is not greater than the overall average of the car park so moving here at the center and moving there this one at the center as well i'm sure that we might be having some lux level issues between these two light fittings so i think it will fall below three checking the distance between them it, it it, it looks a bit more so let's read on the calculation and see if we can get the value it's correct so we got the results here and you can see the point lux level of the car park is greater than the average of the overall car park which is good uh, but here you can see the minimum lux is around less than three for the overall car park so we might have to add a one more pole light here at the center because we also have to consider the pedestrian crossways the average value average horizontal lux value for pedestrian crossway should be greater than 21 greater than or equal to 21 so you can see here the one on the top side on the north side pedestrian crossway one two three four all of these values are greater than or equal to 21 so there's no problem with that but if we go below where our disabled car parks are further away from each other compared to the one on the north side the pedestrian crossway values are not greater than or equal to 21 so we definitely need a light here to get our pedestrian crossway compliant with the standard so i'm going to copy this light from this disable car park and paste it here at the center center of these car park spaces this is done and i'm gonna rerun the calculation to see if we are getting a compliant value or not So you can see here the values are compliant for the last pedestrian crossway it's around 20.8 which I believe would be fine. So yeah everything looks good. Let's do a quick recheck of the whole car park calculations and see if it is compliant. The average is fine, the minimum point is fine. Also 
the uniformity is fine as well which we have already checked earlier let's recheck it again because there might be a change of values after we do some changes so 73 divided by 24 we are getting 3 which is less than 8 so that is fine now you can see here the value point of vertical illuminance as i mentioned earlier should not be less than three so the point vertical luminance is greater than three greater than three on the other direction as well this is also fine and let's check the disable car parking areas this is fine the minimum is greater than the average of the overall car park and same thing with the disable parking too the minimum point is greater than the average of overall car park this one is fine as well since we have already checked the lighting values for the pedestrian crossway these are compliant so we don't have to worry about this now the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna draw a calculation object rectangular calculation object for access driveway and uh, we need to do this as well so just uh, draw this calculation object and rename it to driveway one uh, we need just horizontal lux values. We don't have to worry about vertical stuff here So adding a value chart as well. Make sure you don't forget this. It's important Doing the same for the access driveway 2 as well For access driveways, we have to get 50% of the horizontal average and point lux value of the subcategory PC1 so for PC1 we got average of 14 and minimum of 3 so let's recheck if we are complying with this value we don't have to worry about vertical so the average you can see it's greater than 50 percent of 14 which is 7 so that is fine the minimum point lux level is good as well and same thing with driveway 2 that is fine as well so this is complying i'm gonna draw one more rectangular object here on the road rectangular calculation object on the road to check if there is any spill light from the car park onto this road make sure your values are not greater than three the average values are not greater than three here i did the average for this area vertical lux calculation and you can see the average is not greater than one it's around 0 0.8 something so that is fine as well You can also draw some poles with the help of this construction tab and draw a 3d poles and you can see the poles in the 3d model as well make sure you do that it's not mandatory but for this for presentation purpose as we come to the end of part two of our car park lighting design series we have covered a lot of ground today from creating a project in dialog Evo to drawing calculation objects for different areas of the car park selecting light fittings and then determining the appropriate pole height thus we have explored all aspects of a successful car park lighting design please remember that the key to a great lighting design is to prioritize safety energy efficiency and cost effectiveness by following this step we have outlined in this video you can achieve a well-lit car park that meets all these criteria so with these tips in mind i hope you feel confident in designing a great lighting system for your car park thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video of electrical infinity Double V